shit. That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay, now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Hello, travel friends, and welcome to this brand new series coming to you straight from Japan. In this series, we're taking you through some of Japan's best hotspots and getting a little bit lost along the way. So hit the subscribe button and let's get on with it. G'day guys, after a memorable time spent at Hiroshima last week, we hopped onto another bullet train heading for Kyoto. On the train, we found time to check out YouTube and catch some Z's. Today was a day of travel. After the bullet train, we walked a few kilometers with what seems to be a blown tire on our luggage bag and eventually made it to our hostel. With a big day ahead tomorrow at Fushimi Inari, we prepped our bags and packed for an early start. you guys. Hang on, let's see if this one. Oh my god, I thought that was coming straight for us. So, we are in Kyoto and I'm filming on my phone right now because we are heading to the train station. We arrived in Kyoto yesterday but we had a film free day of um, travelling so we moved from Hiroshima to Kyoto and gave ourselves a day of relaxation and put the cameras down just because we really really needed to. Sometimes you just gotta have a break. So this morning neither kids or I could sleep because we're staying in a um, hostel type bedroom Dormitory. Dormitory. In like capsule beds and it's really nice. It's a nice place, but neither of us can get to sleep. We're so bad at sleeping without each other. And there's some guy in our room just snoring his head off. And vibrating the whole bit. Oh, all the beds are vibrating. And I didn't go to sleep. I think I slept for maybe an hour. He's probably got similar, maybe a little bit more, yeah, but not much. More. Um, but anyway, five o'clock rolled around and we decided to get up and we are heading to uh Hang on, let me work out how to Fushimi, pronounce it. Fushimi Inari. Fushimi Inari Shrine, which is one of Japan's most famous shrines. It's the shrine that has the thousand Tori gates. And if you look it up on Instagram, you'll see thousands of Instagram girls running through these gates with no one around. And the only way you're able to do that is if you get up at 5 a.m., catch a train to Fushimi Inari and beat the crowds. So that is what we're attempting to do. So, time check. It is. 520. It's 520 right now. Sun is not even close to coming up yet. I think it comes up at about 20 past 6. So we will head to the train station, catch a five minute train down the road to, to Fushimi Inari, and we'll catch up with you guys over there. Hopefully it's a bit brighter so you can see me better. All right, we made it in the pitch black. No, no, not going. We made it all the way <laughs> oh. to Kyoto train station. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was going. Oh, it is? Oh my God. We're really, really tired. We have not slept at all. <laughs> we've made it to Kyoto Station and we are heading for Ish... Fushima. No. Fushimi. Fushimi Inari. Fushimi Inari Shrine. The one with the thousand orange Tori gates. So hopefully we'll be the only ones. Those guys over there might be there as well. But we'll see. But it should be pretty quiet. The sun is just starting to come up. It's starting to get a little bit blue around here. So hopefully, hopefully by the time we get there it'll be up enough to get photos and videos and then we can bail before the tourists come. Well we beat the tourists. Yeah we, we thought we beat the There's tourists. There's a small amount of diehards here who obviously got the memo. And they already sprinted up. Yeah a lot but honestly. <laughs> they haven't done 20k's a day. Like no, no our calves are burning from like two days ago. We'll suffer that defeat. <laughs> But no, this is the time to come, guys. It is very dark and gloomy today, but there's nothing we can do about that. It is a bit like Melbourne weather. It's a little bit like, unpredicting. But yeah, yesterday was stunning, but today it's just like, again, wet and overcast. Yeah. It's, it's just beautiful, like everything is very like breathtaking, like everything's big and colourful and like look at this guy, look at all that colour. And it's eerily quiet this morning when there's just a few people here to pray really early. A little bit of jet bells jingling and yeah it's pretty crazy. Think of all the pretty orange Tori gates. Yeah, they're beautiful. It's, uh, 
I love the color of a bowling orange. It stands out quite. Stands out really well in all the green of Japan, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, particularly autumn. They said this is a very popular shine during the autumn as well. Yeah. Yeah. Probably more so than cherry blossom season. Yeah. And there's five shrines here. Yeah. All right, you guys. So we've made it to the Ishi... Fushimi. Fushimi Inari Shrine. And it is, oh, it's gotta be up there, it's either one or two of Japan's most popular places to visit. I feel like we've just kept saying that on and on, but the places we've seen in the last few days are up there as the most popular things to see in Japan. This one is huge with people on Instagram. The gates behind me, they're known as Tori Gates, and here there's 500 of them going one way and 500 of them going another way. So when you walk through them, it's just like this archway of hundreds and hundreds of Tori Gates, and it's supposed to be incredibly beautiful. I don't remember coming here as a 14 year old when I was in Japan 10 years ago, um, but I've seen this scattered all over Instagram. So these orange Tori Gates, they are a traditional Japanese gate, and they are pronounced Tori in Japanese, and they are a sign of sacred passage so they're found in Shinto shrines which is where we are now the religion of Shinto and the idea of it is when you pass through it you go from the mundane to the sacred so if you remember back to our episode on um, Miyajima Island where there's a floating tori which was covered up unfortunately while we were there the commoners would come through the giant tori gate in their boats or their rafts and they would transition from common to sacred as they came through the gate and then they were allowed to enter the Shinto shrine on the island so the gates are actually highly significant and having 500 of them in one direction, 500 in the other direction is a big deal. Okay, so this is what I was talking about before. There's two paths, 500 I believe on one side, 500 on the other side. When you walk back through the Tory gates, you can see the inscriptions, which is actually where the best photos are taken from. Um, but it's good to come through it and experience it and understand what the Tory gates mean and the significance of them all before you spend time getting your photos. So walk through and enjoy it and then get your shots on the way out is my best piece of advice. So what are you thinking photography wise tips for photographing in here apart from get here early? What have you found difficult so far? And don't uh, pick a rainy day. So no, the rainy day is hard. It is quite beautiful because it's very mellow and it's very chill. But yeah. in terms of tips for if you were to come back, um, find the Tory gates like these ones that have quite a big gap in them and position your subject under them and get them to look up and the light hits their face really beautifully. Mm. That's if you're wanting tips on how to photograph this place. And finally, I think the last thing is shooting lower because then you can get more yeah. detail going down. And it's not just a blur of just like the yeah. roof. So the this road. is what Kiz is talking about. You can get lots of cool angles down really low and it creates kind of like a never ending square going off into the distance. and it's actually quite cold this morning so the weather in oops, ouch, stick. the weather in Japan has just been crazy so it's boiling hot one second and then raining and wet and oh, horrible the next so we're not actually gonna spend all that long at um, <laughs> Inari mm. what's the place called again? Fushimi Inari, Fushimi Inari. Uh, just gets way too damn wet and we're actually looking forward to curling up in bed watching a movie while this downpour is occurring but we'll show you around the rest of the place before we head out and um, I think we might try and come back again at some point before we leave. I won't stop trying I wanna get where we belong It is so wet guys. This is gonna be a bit of a struggle to film. Like it's, it doesn't look heavy, it's just consistent. It's just coming down and it's like crazy. Our cameras are drenched. But yeah, beautiful, really hard to film in the rain. Try and look after your camera, Crispin. Yes, I'll make sure it will come back. It's my lens I'm crashing, so yeah. don't feel too bad. Yeah. I just can't get it bloody dry. Oh, I just got shivers. So cold. <laughs> okay guys, this rain is just getting insane now. Our cameras are drenched, and uh, we're gonna leg it back to the train station now. But 
if we don't make it back here again this place is definitely worth seeing way less seriously in the morning i cannot hype that enough come early um, brave the weather it is worth it the photos are gorgeous rain hail or shine but we are getting drenched right now and kids didn't bring a jacket if we didn't have expensive cameras yeah, with us as well yeah, really, really hard work. Um, we'd be able to stick around and just have umbrellas with us but so yeah this this has been beautiful for the rest of the day we're hoping to get out again but for now we're gonna head back to our apartment and curl up in bed and watch some TV because it's like only seven o'clock or something it's really early early and um, yeah we'll catch up with you guys later yeah. Good morning you guys, welcome back to Kyoto. So this morning it is very early again and we are heading back out to Fushimi Inari Shrine. We were there a couple of days ago but it was pouring rain. So we're up early again to go and have a take two at it. And um, yeah, let's head out and hopefully there's not too many people there. And hopefully the sun comes up a bit more because it is really dark out. So when we were here two days ago and it was pouring rain, we basically just did this bit and then back straight back out again because <laughs> we were drenched. But I think today we're going to walk up the hill and check the rest out. Does that sound good? Yeah. Alright, cool. Let's go have a look. Um, the writing on the actual pillars, we've found out that it is from the people who have donated it. Or donated um, the money to get the Tory gates. Yeah. yeah. So, and depending on the size of the Tory gate is the amount that they've put towards the donation. So, the bigger they are, the more they've donated. It would be so interesting to know how much money actually gets donated, because it yeah. would be a lot. Considering that back there there was a thousand gates, and that's not anywhere close to the total amount of this actual like, shrine. I don't know they actually are. I'll try to find out for you guys. Yeah. I don't actually know how many gates there are here, but there are thousands of them. Thousands of them. And they but are really beautiful. As it is, they're all etched, they're not painted on. Um, they're all carved into the actual wood. Yeah. And we're only in our second set of gates now, so we're heading up the mountain and we'll see what's top, up top there. There's a good view up there. The sun's just starting to come up over the mountain, so the lighting is really beautiful. Mm. It's so cool here. Well, let's keep moving. 1.3 million yen for the biggest Tory gate. I wonder which ones are the biggest. Maybe the ones at the very start, start of the walk. I wonder how big the average one is. I reckon they're like that size, the average one. Mm. That's so much money though. Guess that's what happens when you don't pay your rent. <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> there should. are two spaces available if <laughs> wants to donate. <laughs> Alright, so Fushimi, um, it's not the actual god itself, it's the place where we're currently at and this place is dedicated to the gods of rice and sake. Inari is the god of rice, is what this mostly is dedicated to and as you go around you'll see a lot of these stone foxes. In the way of the Japanese is a sacred figure, um, but in particular a deity called Kitsune, which is the messenger of Inari. So they have this well represented around here. But the main thing as well is that they believe that foxes are the defender of rice because foxes eat mice and the mice eat rice. So they look to the deities of, of the gods to prosper in business. Um, and the Nari, as I said before, is the god of rice. So that's why they've dedicated this whole shrine to it. <laughs> yeah, it's this little area is insane. Everyone's bought little tiny Tory gates to leave as like a gift. And it looks a bit like a like a graveyard, but yeah. all these like stone statues and all these like Tory gates. Crazy, huh? It's like they've just stored it all the way up here, so yeah. if something broken down south, they'll just replace it. It's but, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Stop stealing shrines, Kieran. It doesn't come with the hike. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's just hanging here like it's like they've got extras <laughs> there's a lot here there's a lot I'm walking but all these thoughts are running yeah, and catch me if you can and I'm wondering if I should chase behind or stop wondering and try to take a stand. You survived? Oh, we made it to the top. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the top looks the exact same as halfway. Just no. not, not saying don't do it, just saying the top is the same as the halfway point. Do you want to save yourself for trouble? This is another shrine up top here, but yeah, as we videoed before, exactly the same. Yeah. And even if you had a better view, it's pretty obstructed up here. Yeah, it's a beautiful view halfway, but this is the summit of Fushimi Inari. Ah, here she is. <laughs> All over it. Um, well, yeah, we made it. That was a lot of Tory gates. I'd love to know how many Tory gates there are exactly. And we were learning back down the hill a bit what they cost. And I'm going to do the maths for you guys and try and work out some really cool statistics because there is a lot of tour gates and they are really expensive. Mm. So. <sighs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> well, it's on the way back. Let's count all the tour gates so we can tell us. Yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst we are trudging down this hill, let us enlighten you on some facts and details on Fushimi and Nari. There are 10,000 Tori gates and here in Fushimi and Nari and 12,000 steps to complement it. The biggest of the Tori gates are worth 1.3 million yen. Converted to Australian dollar, that's about 18k. A full loop of the shrine would take you two to three hours, so bring comfortable footwear other than your dazzling heels for the Instagram. This is a tourist hotspot. It's estimated upwards of 2.7 million people visit this shrine per year. Plan your shots and come early. There isn't a gate fee nor line, so anytime you feel comfortable. There is 30,000 shrines dedicated to Anari. This here, my friends, is the most popular. So we've made it down from the Fush Fushimi. We've made it down from the Fushimi and Ari Shrine, and it was quite a walk. It was a lot quicker coming down than going up, but I think it's because we stopped to take like a million photos. It's really glary out here. I'm sorry, I'm squinting. Um, but yeah, really, really, really busy now. I highly recommend coming before eight o'clock. Come as early as you possibly can. 637 was good for us. The sun's coming up, you get some beautiful light rays and things, and the walk is really peaceful. But now it is just bedlam. There is people everywhere, which makes sense. It's one of the most popular shrines, if not the most popular shrine in Japan. But now we're gonna head back to our hotel in North Kyoto, and this afternoon we're hoping to make a calligraphy class because we had to cancel on Wednesday because I was really unwell. But there is another class on today at 12.30. We're hoping to get there, so we'll see how it goes. We haven't done anything that is more of a... We haven't done a Japanese class yet. We haven't yeah. done a cooking class or anything. So usually when I travel, I try and do a cooking class. But I thought this time we would do a calligraphy class. So we'll see if we can get in this afternoon. If not, I don't know what we're going to do. That's what happens when you give Hannah Google Maps. She's been struggling. It's not that I'm a bad map reader. It's that my Google Maps doesn't work. <laughs> I think it's up here. Yeah. Okay, you guys. So we went back to our little apartment in Kyoto and had um, some lunch, which was delicious. And now we're heading to Shunko Inn Temple, which is where we're going to do our calligraphy class, if I can find it on this damn Google Maps. <laughs> The meditation, tea yeah. ceremony. Japanese calligraphy. 1 p.m. Okay, so the reverend here is quite well renowned and his name is Reverend Takafumi Kawakami. And this Buddhist, it's a Buddhist temple within the Mayo Shinji temple complex here in Kyoto. So Reverend Takafumi Takafumi is well 
known worldwide for his talks on mindfulness and his meditation classes and he's gone around the world giving um, TED Talks, he's talked at Brown University, MIT University about how bringing in mindfulness practices in today's hectic lifestyle can really help us feel a bit more centred and he also teaches us to be more satisfied and creative in our work so that we're more well-rounded beings and not just working for money but working for satisfaction and creativity and all those really cool things so that's sort of what grabbed my attention with this place so the calligraphy class we're taking today is 300 3,500 yen each which is about $40 Australian which I think is definitely worth it the tea ceremonies I think are 3,000 yen and the meditation slash tour of the temple is also 3,000 yen so quite affordable and quite a good afternoon out in Kyoto and something special that you will remember from your time here Impressed? I'm very impressed. And you did a great work. You nailed that. Thank you. Thank you. You're a really small man though. Yeah, I do. And I squished it up. So that's okay. Mum can put that in her office. Look what I did. Look what you just painted. That was the funnest thing I have done in Japan. That was so good. Wish we could have filmed it, but we were too like... we got a little bit, but it's more about just being a part of it. So if you are in Kyoto, 100%, Shunko Inn Temple, the lady who taught it was incredible. We made all of these artworks in here, there's heaps of them, and then got to do like a really special one at the end. And what's that one mean? Zen. Zen. I'm gonna give it to my mum to hang in her office at work to remind her to zen a little bit more. <laughs> no, that was so, did you really enjoy it? No, I really enjoyed that. She's so nice and she speaks like beautiful English <laughs> and everything's explained really, really well. There's like a horde of kids going past me yeah. right now. But no, Beautiful English, explained everything perfectly, and she's just like really funny and humorous and can answer all your questions and stuff. So, oh, yeah. highly recommend. I'll put all of their details in the comments below so you can check it out. Awesome. Okay, let's go. Thanks for watching, guys. Join us next week as we venture out to Kinkaku G Temple and its stunning gold leaf pavilion. Later, we checked out one of Japan's most popular chains of ramen, Ichiran, or what we call introvert ramen, and slurped our body weights in ramen. Catch you later, guys. So we've made it to the Ishi... Fushimi. Fushimi Inari Shrine. So we're not actually going to spend all that long at um, Fukushima... Inari. We're at the Inishi Imari... Imari? Fumari? <laughs> Fumishi? Fushi... Fushimi. Alright, we're at the Fushimi Inari Shrine. Subscribe! <laughs>